You're listening to The Design Hustle Show. Hey there, it's Jeff from DPI Graphics. I'm your host for The Design Hustle Show. This is where you'll get straight talk about marketing and design from experts in the business. Each episode, we'll tackle some current trends, tips, tricks, and best practices on how to get the most out of your marketing on a budget and provide some insight into how to apply them to your hustle. So grab your favorite beverage and join us for the Design Hustles Show. Episode 2, Season 2 of the Design Hustle Show is about knowing when to start your own freelance gig. I cover my experiences and thoughts on starting out on your own, as well as some recommended resources for guidance on how to get started. Let's jump right in. So today's episode is about um, when to know when to go out on your own uh, freelance gig or something on that idea. Um, the There's really no, you know, like you're going to get hit in the head with it kind of time that uh, (laughs) that you'll be able to tell, oh, yay, this is, you know, this is when I need to go out on my own. However, um, there are some signs, you know, uh, from my experience. So um, I graduated college in 1996. Um, I jumped right into the workforce. Let's back up a little bit. So when I first went to art school in 1992, um, orientation the first day there they were just kind of like you know trying to scare you into being like oh you don't belong here kind of thing um and so they um they said to us i'm like you know these were all there for fine arts we're, we're paying 20 grand which at the time was going great for college um and they're like you know you guys will probably all be electricians or plumbers not artists and, and that's what you'll, your occupation will be because, you know, that's the way it works. And I'm like, the hell I'm going to be. Um, so at that moment, I decided I will forever and always make a living either as an artist or something in the arts. Um, so from there, got my degree, um, got out of college um, and jumped right into the workforce. Uh, my first job was at a plastics injection uh, plastic injection molding company, um, and I was doing printing and foil st- stamping on their stuff, um, which was not great, but it was a job. And um, But from there, I moved on to where I had interned at. It was a screen printing company, um, and they did t-shirts and all the kinds of apparel and stuff like that. Um and at that point, I really had no plan to go out on my own as far as like, you know, having my own business or, you know, a gig like that. Um, but what I did do, um, and this was three years in, um, so the company got bought out um, or liquidated. Um, so we all lost our jobs. Um, and at that point, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I look for another job um found something and it was during that time that i was just like um so the internet was really just starting to to ramp up we were dsl was the big thing so if you're familiar with the internet um dsl um came after like dial up and um so you know the internet was a huge um precursor to um you know moving forward with your career um at that point graphic artists were graphic artists you didn't do any of the web stuff there wasn't web stuff to be done so didn't worry about it um but in that moment i was just like wait a second there's a new thing coming through and it's web design and i want a part of that so i had to learn more about it so more education um and then i decided well i think i need a website too so that's what i did i built my first website it was really awful um had flash buttons and it was just it was just really bad 90s logo the whole nine yards um so i did that and i once again got laid off just before 9 11 um in 2001 
and didn't know what to do with myself at that point. Um, I had my website, um, but I, and I thought about, well, how do I, how do I go about doing, doing, uh, you know, uh, freelance and that kind of thing? Um, of course, the internet wasn't what it is now. So we didn't have things like fiber and um, those types of sites where you could, you know, solicit for, you know, people using your services and whatnot. So, um, so yeah. Um, so I worked um, to find another job in addition to kind of work in my, my freelance or eh, it wasn't even freelance at that point. Uh, it was more fine art. I was doing fine art as well. So it, a lot of different things going on. Um, but as I went along, you know, job after job, I, I had, um, let's see, I had six layoffs in 15 years. And that's all from design jobs, uh, production artist, uh, graphic artist, designer, uh, for one reason or another, whether it was the company went out of business um, or they were downsizing, like two newspapers that were downsizing. And so um, lost my job twice to newspaper um you know a ponzi scheme for one of the the uh the places that i worked at the uh you know it was it was not not the place i worked at but one of their customers was was kind of screwing them um and and thus everybody else so um what am i getting at i am getting at the fact that as i went along over the course of my now almost 20 almost 30 year career um i have had my design business um my freelance gig as the thing i fall back on and it's great for additional income when did i know when to start that i didn't um i luckily i had the foresight to you know kind of get things in motion back when freelancing was kind of new uh, as far as like design is concerned um but um so i i started it not knowing i was starting it and that's probably the <laughs> easiest way to to go about that um as far as when to strike out on your own um there's there's a couple ways to to know when it's when it's the time to do that um and the 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 first thing to think about is is you know if you know you're not cut out to be someone's employee and that means like if you think you are better than them or you just don't like being told what to do um or for whatever reason any number of reasons you know if you're not cut out to be someone's employee you want to be the boss then that's a good time to start thinking about having your own gig um second if you can do something better than how it's being done. And that's kind of how I stumbled onto design and freelancing um, because I um, felt that there had to be a better way with some of the, the way design was being done. And what do I mean by that? Well, design typically was like these huge, huge hourly rates and, you know, only the big companies could afford that kind of thing, like your corporations and stuff like that. Like they could afford a a freelance designer with a, you know, $200 an hour rate. And I was just like, there's got to be a better way. So that's kind of was my thinking and for getting into the freelancing. I want to be, and this is kind of my, my purpose, is that I wanted to be a designer that, all businesses and or organizations could use because we all need the the design and design quality design shouldn't be limited to just people who have big budgets so if you think you can do something better than how it's being done or differently more uniquely than be, how it's being done it's a good time to think about getting out on your own and lastly I mean, money is the motivator, right? Uh, if you need extra money or more money, I um, mean, don't we all this day and age, um, you know, with inflation and stuff like that, um, having a side gig is a great source of, of um, uh, some extra income to help make 
you know, make ends meet um, to, you know, if you have, you want to travel and if that's what you want to do to support your travel um, expenses, it perfect way. Um, so those are the three things that I, I think about when someone asks me, well, when did you know when to start out? Well, these are the things that I ask myself. I'm like, can I do something better than, than how it's being done? Probably. Um, am I still somebody's employee? Yes, I am. Um, I hustle and I hustle. I've been hustling for years. Um, but I'm also, um, my own boss. So, um, not quite as big a deal for me and always the extra income is fantastic. So, um, so anyways, um, some gig economy stats, cause we're in this gig economy and, um, it's, it's not going away anytime soon. You know, you've got the places like Uber and, and DoorDash and all those things where people can make money on their time. They don't have to be chained to a desk for eight hours. Um, and, and that's a, that's the important thing. Like, people don't want that anymore. And that's why we've got this giant hiring problem where everyone's hiring because they think no one wants to work. Well, no, they don't want to work chained to a desk for eight hours. That's what they don't want. So, and, and culture is a big part of that too. But so as of 2022, there are almost 60 million freelancers, gig workers, slash hustlers working in the United States alone. Just in the U.S., 57.3 million freelancers. That's a lot. And that explains why the workforce, it, it, like our, our, you know, hiring is such a big problem because you can't find people because they don't want to. They're making more money on their time being a freelancer. Something to think about. They work between 11 and 30 hours per week. So if you could do your your income, if you could earn your income inside of 30 hours a week, not 40, 30, would you do it? Of course you would. Um, and that's what they're doing. That so this is this is from Statista. Th these are like you know, real stats. Um, freelancers make up 25% um of these these 57.3 million that's one quarter of the freelancers gig workers are freelancers which is kind of what i do but a little different um so that's a big chunk that's a big chunk of our economy that is is making money on their own um so that leads me to another thing. So people are just like, well, how do I break into the the um, the design freelancing gig? That's tough. And I'm going to go back, back, back to the the turn of the century, 2000, um, back when the internet was just starting to be a, a real big thing. Um, and what I did then was I went to school for computers. That was my first thing. Um, and I got a certificate in computers because I needed to know more about that. However, um, I started to learn more about HTML um, and CSS and all the things that go along with building a website. And as time went along, I'm like, I need to know more. So I got a second degree in web development and built on what I already knew and I continued to um, to to hone my skills. So what am I getting at? Instead of just being a graphic designer, fine artist, whatever you want to, you know, however you want to label yourself, um, you need to to, to um, differentiate yourself from the rest of the crowd. Um, I was a graphic designer by trade. That was where my most of my experience was. Um, but then I became a web designer also. So I started doing websites. And that when I looked for jobs as a graphic designer and they saw, oh, wait, he has web des design experience also, uh, they were like, yeah, this seems like a you know a great idea. You're, you're multifaceted, you can do lots of things. 
Um, so it makes you more marketable. So if you're if you want to break into that design gig economy, don't just do one thing well. All right, do your graph design. Yes, learn some web design. Learn how to apply design to the web and all those things um, that will help out you getting started. Um, and if you're if you're like a web designer and you want to break into the design thing, vice versa. You just kind of work on your design skills and take a course, whatever you need to do. But th those are your those are your your go tos. That's that's how you start that. Um, get a website and not Behance. Um, you can get a, um, a domain very cheaply on like GoDaddy and things like that. Um, I have a host that I've been using for 20 years or more. Um, a little more expensive, but I don't have as much um, hassle um, with other thing, other um, carriers and, and other um, suppliers of domains and, 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 and you know, make it um, specific to you. Um, you know, I chose DPI graphics largely because back when I chose the name, um, DPI was dots per inch and I was a print designer and yay. And now I'm just like, well, I've got the name and, and then the SEO is pretty good. So I don't want to mess that up. So I still have DPI graphics and kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it does. It works. Anyways, get yourself a website. Can't be on Behance or any of those other sites where it's a shared domain and you just have a page. Like, no, no, no. Build yourself a site. You can do it with WordPress or or Wix to start. Um, you know, get it done um, and then have that up. The next thing you want to do, or even before that, um, determine what kind of work you're going to do and for who. Um, find your niche. Um, and, and you would think, well, I want to work with everybody. I'm like, well, that was my mistake. I wanted to work with everybody. I wanted to work with the big guys. I want to work with little guys. I wanted to work with individuals. Like, I wanted to work with everybody. Part of the problem with that is that you end up not having specific experience with any one of those things. And sometimes you take jobs just to um say you did something um for the experience and stuff like that and not a good scene like what you really need to do is do your research um determine what you want to do for, for and for who uh, whether it's small businesses exclusively or you just want to work with nonprofits or aren't entrepreneurs and startups pick one um pick an industry like if you say i i really want to help out the healthcare industry with you know, building websites about, you know, hiring or whatever, like pick one and stick with it. And then from there, you've got your niche. And then from there, build your website around that. Um, other things you want to think about doing are um, how you're going to charge, what you're going to charge. Um, I personally don't believe in hourly rates. Hourly rates are kind of the, uh, it's a tough way to get into using them because they, you know, the project can take forever. And then by the end of it, you know, if you've got like 60, 70, 80 hours in and you've got, you know, you didn't charge enough for your hourly rate, say you're only doing 40 to $50 an hour. Like, yeah, it's still a chunk of change, but could you be charging more? Probably. So what I'm, what I do currently, I do have an hourly rate. I don't use it very much. What I do currently is I, um, I charge by the project. Um, I, and I have set pricing for projects and I will, I will do individual quotes for custom work and things like that. But I have, um, a set list of custom, um, of, of pricing for design websites and things like that, as long as they're within the scope of, you know, what that, um, what that pricing structure, you know, entails, um, 
But what I'm going to think about moving to is value-based pricing. And that's an interesting concept because rather than charging by a project for a, on a set flat rate, um, which you can get burned on very easily, especially if you do more work than what was scoped out because of scope creep and all that great stuff. Um, same thing with hourly rate. Um, you know, sometimes you can, you can, if you don't do a lot of <clears throat> hours, if you do something in less time, you're, you're bound by that hourly rate and you can kind of get, get screwed. Even though what you did is the same as what you would have done, like the pro end product is the same. And that's, that's important to think about. I'm like, the client really only cares about the end product. They don't care about, you know, how many hours you put in or, or the, this, that, or the other thing that you did to 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 do the job they care about the end product does it work is it what they wanted and that's what they're paying for they're not paying for your hours they're paying for where the product what value-based pricing says what and it takes a little bit more time to implement but it has a lot of merit um so when you were working you know when you first um meeting with a, a new client and they they have um you know their list of demands um but they have their um what they need um you listen very closely and some of the questions before you even get to price because they'll that'll be one of the first questions they ask um before you even get to price you want to um find out what they expect out of whatever it is you're you're getting like if it's brochure if it's it's a sales proposal thing a uh, website you name it whatever it is you're building ask them what they intend to get and usually you know if it's not a tangible number like i want a million dollars in sales okay great um or if it is more like well we want you know more members joining or we we want traffic to increase you you need to have something to base that on but value-based pricing is when the, the client puts a value on what you're going to do for them and then you charge a percentage to build that and and it takes a while you know to to kind of implement that but if you think about it like you know the you know um say million dollars off of the revenue of a website um then you charge what between 10 and 20 percent 10 percent is a hundred thousand so that's that's a pretty good chunk of change um so something to think about i haven't fully uh, investigated that myself but i am looking into it um i think it has some merit and um well worth the research um so whether knowing when to start your gig and when um you know sometimes a layoff is the the you know um of when you need to um to uh, start your your uh, freelance business and that's sometimes that's that's it that's that's your that's your sign um there's your sign um other times it's not as clear and you know i i like to plan and be ready <laughs> i'm a planner um so what i do is try to um be ready for those instances just in case um you know when you know like the pandemic happened and um you know the company i was working for at the time um furloughed us for three weeks um and some people came back and some people didn't during those three weeks i worked on um building up my business just in case this was longer than um just a couple weeks um but um and, and and i did you know in that time i worked on my business um and i had it there it was it was it's always there i just spent more time on building it up and that's what you need to do is is do all of the um the hard work you know the the you know figuring out the the name what you're going to call yourself what 
work are you going to do? Who are you going to do it for? Do all that before you actually need the income from your freelance gig. Um, and doing that will help you um, it, when you have the time, because once once you're already working, it's no time. Once you're already working as a freelance er gig worker, hustler, whatever you want to call it, um, that's no time to start figuring that stuff out. Now, is it do you do you have to wait until you know everything about how you're going to do it um, before you jump right in and do it? Um, no. No, in fact, like if you have a basic idea of what you're going to offer and have a way to just get out there and start, do it. Um, but, you know, it's best to have a plan um, before you get into that situation, because it won't say say you your freelance project goes over big um, and you have no time to um, work on any of the other things that, you know, like your website or or you know pricing and all that like so some of these things have to be worked on in tandem um others you can work on um over time but you know the the big thing is 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 starting um just just starting um when the time is right and for everyone it's going to be different um it really depends on you know where you are in life um when i started i wasn't i was still in my 20s um and was wasn't married at that point well <laughs> kind of well i went through a divorce and 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 it was a really low part of my life and but i i chose i chose to turn it into a positive and move forward and then from there um i met a girl and we got married and had some kids and now um almost 20 years and four kids later still running my business still married still being dad um and it's 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 good having that extra income it makes it a challenge especially if you've got a family um finding time to work on it um, you know, as far as when to work on your, your, your freelance gig, if you're currently working, um, I recommend, um, I recommend, you know, finding a time that isn't being utilized by family time or, or spouse time. Um, you know, a lot of people swear by get up early in the morning, get up an hour earlier, uh, it was a book called Miracle Morning by Hal um elrod no that's not right anyways uh miracle morning and um you know there are a bunch of activities to do that hour before you get up before everything else and it's supposed to energize you and and get you ready for your day um and for a while i did that um if you're not a morning person then it's tough um but if and even if you aren't a morning person, try getting up an hour early and work on the stuff that you have a passion for. Um, it does make a difference, and you are, you'd are you be amazed at how much you can accomplish and how much your day gets better from there. Um, there's that sense of accomplishment. There's that sense of I'm doing something with my life and moving it forward, um, even if you're just getting ready and going to your day job. Um, it, just that hour earlier, that hour to work on your passion is, is important. So, um, and if mornings don't work for you, find a time, you know, even 30 minutes, um, 30 minutes a week, an hour a week is, is best, but thir or 30 minutes a day, um, you know, an hour a day, if you can do it, um, that's, that's really the, the important part. Um, now what do you do with that time? Um, couple theories I kind of subscribe to are the focusing on one thing. Um, now if you're, if you're focusing on building your website, um, you know, do activities to 
move that forward. So if it's writing the content for your website, if it's writing that out, all right, get that done. Um, if it's finding imagery, get that done. Like do things towards a certain goal rather than like, all right, I need a logo and I need a website and I need this and I need that. Focus on one thing. Get that one thing done. Move on to the next. Um, the, the focusing on the one thing really is about you know, completion and moving forward rather than moving on a bunch of things and only making a little bit of progress on any of them. So, so do that. Um, and what else? Um, focusing on the one, one thing, uh, there's a great book, um, called the one thing, um, great book. And it goes through all of the, you know, how do I do that? What do I do? Um, and that kind of thing. And in addition to all this, and if you have any spare time beyond that, um, I recommend reading. Um, and in the Miracle Morning, reading is a part of the activities that they suggest there. But um, in the um, interest of reading, um, I've read a lot of stuff uh, lately that I just whatever I can get my hands on. Um, John Acuff um, has a great book, two two great books, um, but one book is called Start. Um, the other is called Quitter. Now, Quitter is not what you think it is, um, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it it's both are great books. Um, both are avail available on Amazon. Um, you can follow him on LinkedIn. Um, great, great book. Um, he's got some great, great um, points and and he's like he's like us like he's a guy that started out you know as a freelancer and it, it just his story is great um and i highly recommend it um other books i've read you know um seven habits of Fi Hi Ugh. seven habits of highly successful people that's a good one um i read a lot of industry stuff um with regard to websites um website building um, some leadership stuff, um, good to great. That's by Jim Collins. That's another good one. Um, anything by Simon Sinek, um, is good. Um, start with why start with why is a very good book to, to, to lean into. If you're, if you're getting into the freelance, uh, world, um, you know, there's eaters eat last another good one. So find some of these books, um, and they will help put you in the right perspective um, by, you know, telling you like, all right, this is how you need to be. This is what you need to focus on. Um, and focusing is in general is, is kind of where you need to, you know, where, where you need to be. Um, so that's, that's about the, the, the most I can say about, um, you know, knowing when to start a freelance gig, um, you know, I, my, my kids, like, God bless them. Like, they're like, I want to, I want to have a business. I'm like, okay. So, um, this is a little bit off the beaten path here, but we're going to go there. Um, so my, my kids, um, one of them is, she's just going to be turning 12. Um, and she's wanting to start a business and producing stickers and whatnot. So the other night I sat down with her, I'm like, all right, you need to find, figure out what your, you know, who, what, where, when, how, why. And, and so we went through that and I think it probably overwhelmed her a little bit, but she's one that likes the, um, likes the plan, likes, likes to, to, you know, come up with things. So, you know, she, she's got a goal she, for, for what she's saving money for. Um, but that's what I, that's what I recommended to her. Like, you know, you got to figure out what. You got to figure out when, when do you need the money by, um, you got to figure out who, who you're doing it for. You're going to be the one doing the work, but who are you doing this for? Um, uh, why, you know, why are you doing this? Why now? You know, what's, what's the point? Um, and where, how are you going to sell this? Or not so much where, but where are you going to sell this? Is it on your website? If you're going to do it in person, or what, how are you going to do this? And then how, how, um, ultimately like, 
the nuts and bolts how it's going to be done so and and she seemed to be okay with it she wrote it all down so we'll find out later um but those are the kinds of things that i recommend even to my kids um that you know when they say i i want to do this i'm like okay let's back up a little bit um so if you're thinking about starting out on your own um great uh, you know, I highly recommend it, especially for, for you folks who are getting out of college, um, getting into the industry that way. Um, very, very important to um, set up a personal brand, which is another topic for another time. Uh, but Dave Gerhardt, another book, uh, Founder Brand, um, is a great, um, great um, book to... Um, to get to read about creating a personal brand um and that is uh important for you as an artist um for anyone really um not getting into it too much but you're you are a person who is on these places like linkedin and twitter um and like your brand pe people follow you you know, it, they may not follow your business, but they'll follow you. So, and it's a very personal thing. So build up your brand and build up your following in there. And then, you know, you can kind of direct them to, to your company and, and, and freelance services and whatnot. So, um, I guess the other, the other thing to add on to this is that, um, you know, knowing, knowing where to start your 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 uh business for freelance um linkedin and twitter um those are the 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 best places to start a a um a business um linkedin obviously because it's a, it's a business platform um and you want to create connections business wise that's the place to do it um twitter wider audience you can connect with pretty much anyone in the world um, feedback is almost instantaneous. Um, you can create relationships with people. You can do like, like a live Q and a, um, it, it's a great platform despite any, you know, uh, feelings you may have with regard to its executive leadership. Um, the platform itself is good for, um, business building B2B, which is kind of where you're going to be if you're moving into the freelance design um industry um the um b2b is is where it's at um if you're b2c well then you know all of the platforms um but pick one to focus on um you know if you're trying to reach millennials or people younger than that then you should um probably um you know focus on like tiktok or youtube or reels or something like that um uh, video based um but so but that's that's like cart before the horse that's you know all right once you've got your business built up then you share it on these other platforms and you know start fielding questions start talking to people um you know go to networking events um there's all kinds of them in person virtual um so it's it's worthy of you know doing once you have once you start you know once you start um and have a plan to you know like i'm i'm offering these services um and this is my pricing um and go from there like create conversations um and it'll help help you determine how you need to make changes to your business going forward and that's kind of how i've done it over the years you know 2002 is when i really started the business i you know got the name oh that's another important thing is that if you're not doing business under your personal name you're doing it under a business name like dpi graphics you'll need to register that name with the state um and if it's in new hampshire i, I believe it, it's a 50 dollars fee um and it's every five years i think that you have to renew that um but um you know it's it's always nice if you do something like that where you have a name uh in the event that it does get to be a bigger thing than just you um someday maybe it is a bigger thing than just you and and 
that would be great, right? Um, so that's kind of what I'm recommending. Um, there's not a whole lot more to it than that, other than to do your research, um, make sure that your 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 plan is in place to be, you know, how are you going to make money, you know, um, what you're going to offer and to who. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot going on there and there's a whole lot of websites out there that'll help you along. The books I've mentioned are great for helping with that stuff also. Um, and, um, yeah. Um, I, if you want to reach out to me anytime, um, I would love to, to give you my knowledge on, on, um, you know, the freelance gig and, and that kind of thing. Um, you can reach out to me at jbrown at dpigraphics.net and, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, take your questions and, and see what I can do to help out. Um, and so that's it. That's what I've got for you. Um, so, um, what I've been doing with, with all of my, my guests that I have on, uh, the design hustle show, um, I've been asking them what their favorite lunch spot is. Um, and I do have a favorite lunch spot. Um, is the Kelly Street Bakery in Manchester. Um, it's on the west side, and they have the best meatloaf sandwich in the world. Their their bread is homemade. Like, the, everything is homemade and delicious, and the, even the store s smells fantastic. So Kelly Street Bakery in Manchester, New Hampshire. And um, that's it. All right. We will catch you next time. Um, thank you for tuning in. Well, that's it for this episode of the Design Hustle Show. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed it, please give us an honest review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Amazon Music. Show notes for this episode are available on our website, designhustleshow.com. Got a question that you want to hear us discuss on the air? Drop us a line at designhustleshow at dpigraphics.net or visit our website, designhustleshow.com. Thanks, and see you next time.